welcome to the It's Time to Sell podcast with your host, Chris Spurvey. Chris is dedicated to mentoring entrepreneurs and sales professionals through the fear of selling so they can confidently bring their product or service to market. Here's your host, Chris Spurvey. Heather, welcome to the It's Time to Sell podcast. Grateful for taking you taking the time. Thank you. It's time to sell. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> Time to sell this, baby. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Why don't you tell the audience who you are and what and yeah. you know what you're all about? Fill us in. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for having me. So I've been in the information marketing entrepreneur world since '01. Uh, my first uh, million online was '05. My uh, big other big business was zero to 1.5 million sales in 2015 online. So I've been an online marketer and entrepreneur since for a long time. Um, but at the end of the day, I'm in sales, right? So in corporate, I started in corporate sales, business to business sales um, back in that 95 and telecom, which, you know, there's three kinds of sales that are hard to get, like business to business out, telecom and copiers. Those are the big ones and insurance. If you can like survive those, you're good. I survived those. I did very well. Uh, I was actually number one in the country. I had 10,000 reps at a ripe young age of 25. But my coworker was average male at 40. So I, I did well. And so on the end of the day, um, I'm an entrepreneur, but I'm a copywriter and salesperson and help people with their uh, sales systems online. Yeah. You know, how do they sell products and services no matter what that is, right? Could be product services, seminars um, themselves, consulting. How do they do that in an online setting? Yeah, gotcha. Sounds like you've had a very diverse background. Uh, Thank you. Yeah, that's awesome. So has, has sales always been very natural for you or did you, uh, did you struggle out of the gate? Yeah, absolutely. So I, I, you know, when I was in, when I got hired in the telecom world at 25 years old, I wasn't supposed to get hired. So I walked in for the interview and I'm 25, not, I didn't have finished my degree yet. And I said, I want to do business to business sales. And the guy laughed at me because I was this cute, you know, 25 year old girl. So he's like, ha ha ha, that's cute. You're in customer service. And I said, no. And like, we had this big like fight. And of course he did the whole like, well, let me talk to my boss. And so I was like, oh, I get another interview with the boss. You know, that's how that corporate goes. Like, well, I'll pass it. So he yeah. passed it and she happened to be a female and I had this great conversation with her. And what I basically told her was like, look, I know I don't fit the mold, but I know that if I'm going to have a career in anything, I, I, it's going to be in sales. Like I got to, I got to see if I'm going to be able to do it. And he's, she's like, give her a shot. The worst case is she fails and we just put her in customer service. So I, they threw me a desk. They go, here's your desk. It was this metal desk. They threw me, um, business cards with my name on it. They could have easily been like, you know, discarded in five seconds. And they threw me a yellow pages and a phone. Wow. And they said, go like, they didn't give me any training. And they said, here's your quota. If you don't make it in three months, you're out like typical, like adult. And they said, don't like your person next to you because it's just a rotating door. It was like that. Like the person next to me, the desk next to me was like, hi, I don't want to know your last name because we can't be friends. You probably won't be here. But I mean, and that's what it was like. It was like a, you know, all his own, right? There was no support really other than here's what we're selling this month kind of right. thing. Oh, and I, I mean, I had to really figure it out. I remember we drove, um, some like coworkers. I went to a, um, basically a business park yeah. and there was this huge sign that said no solicitation, you know, right. and we get out of the car and we'd like, just pass it, you know, it's just not walk in the door. <laughs> hey, yes, we see the large sign that says that anyway, you know, <laughs> but I, I think that it helped me break through my personal shell and help me pass barriers. That's one thing's in sales. You have to kind of know in a weird way, there's, there's lines and then there's lines. You know what I mean? Yeah. You go aside, this is no solicitation. You're like, gotta go anyway. You know what I mean? And see what happens. And sometimes I get kicked out, but most of the time I got the, Oh yeah. The owner wants to see you, you yeah. know, because they're lazy too. Cause they're like, Oh great. They're coming towards me. I don't have to like do cool. it. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so I learned, I learned how to, I just, I learned by doing, I didn't really have a sales process. It wasn't until years later that I started in the information marketing business in the, in the seminar business where I was traveling around the country doing 450 events, 50 events a year, every year wow. that I had to learn a process because in that sales environment, I'm sitting in front of a room of strangers mm. and I had 90 minutes to get three thousand dollars out of their pockets and if i didn't get that money we're eating ramen noodles tonight yeah 
If we yeah. got that money, we're eating Ruth Chris steak. Like that's the choice I had. Yeah. So that's when I started to learn like, you know, direct response copy and no like, and trust and mm -hmm. connection. And how do you move someone in from the fence to closing the deal? All those little kind of nuances got really kind of fine tuned yes. there. Yeah, like, absolutely. How did you, uh, so you, you made a, tra a transition from being an employee yeah. to being an entrepreneur. Uh, yes. what was the stimulus there? Uh, you know, was it, was it personal development or, uh, you know, that led to this epiphany that I'm an entrepreneur? Oh God, no, 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 no. So I was at the telecom company. Um, I, like I said, I was pretty young. The average co -worker, my coworker was 40 male, whatever. And I was number one in the country. I had 10,000 reps my, my, I thought I did my last year, my fourth year, yeah. which I was very proud of. And then after I got my, what I call, you know, thank you so much for making all that money. You know, I was like waiting for the Rolex or like the Cadillac, you know? Yeah. I didn't get that. I got nope. the like, I got my walking papers. They fired me. Ah. <clears throat> yeah. And people always ask those questions and I hope oh, maybe you can understand, maybe you can explain really get this but in the sales world you think that the number one person gets promoted to manager or promoted up right sometimes yeah but if you don't fit the mold or you're expensive for the company yeah you're out yeah yeah absolutely i was, ex I was expensive for the company and i didn't fit the mold to be promoted up right because i was 26 years old i mean do what am i gonna do like become a sales manager for men over 40 like back then there's no way that would have happened right. and then i tried to get promoted to corporate and i just didn't fit that mold at all so mm. they literally fired me and how they fired me because people always say how they fire you i don't know why people get all like weird about that but it's really easy in sales they take away they go we're gonna take away all your accounts and give them to somebody else but you still have your quota right exactly oh. <laughs> i think that's called fired i think <laughs> Is that call fired? Well, we don't know. Do you want to resign? I don't know. <laughs> so that's how that happened, you know, yeah. and it really threw me because in my world, in my view at the time and my life, it was like work for a big company, right? You make them a lot of money. They yeah. give you a little bit and then everyone's happy. And so when all of a sudden I got my walking papers at this very young age, 25, I called my father in total tears and he was like, okay, welcome to corporate world. That's that, is that what you want. And I'm like, no, he's like, well then don't go work for another company. Right. And so I sat in like six months of just not having a job. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what to do. And all my friends, of course, were like, just go get another job. Just go get another job. And I said, I don't know what I want in life. I just don't want that. Yeah. Right? Okay. That's, so that's how I then ended up, and it's a really interesting story for me to share it because it's kind of interesting. But basically what happened, I was sitting on my friend's couch. I didn't have a job. And I saw this infomercial. And the infomercial said something like, you know, do you want to control your life? Do you want to make more money? I'm like, yes. <laughs> I'm there. We'll come to the seminar tomorrow at one o'clock. And I'm like writing it down that my girlfriend's like in the kitchen. I'm like, Ch -ch -ch -ch. Yeah. And so I go to the seminar and I sit in the seat and this, this was the, this was what started me on my journey where I'm at today. I sat in the seat. I'm like, you know, 27, 26 or seven years old. I'm one of the only females I'm sitting in the seat and they're selling me into a $3,000, you know, real estate course. Uh, okay. Right? Yeah. You, you know what I'm talking about? Like yeah. those. And I didn't have three grand, but right. they did say something that I was just the most magical words on the planet, which was for your spouse, it's a thousand. So I was like, sweet. So I nudged the stranger next to me and I'm like, yo, can you be my spouse? And he's like, all right. So, <laughs> so we go to the back of the room, different last names, no ring, you know, different addresses. I don't even know. I, to this day, I don't know his name, Bob, Jerry, whatever. And um, I give my credit card for my grand, my thousand dollars. And then he gave him three. And wow. You never even went half son before. No, we never. Right. And then the, the seminar happened, you know, and he never showed up They're like, where's your spouse? I'm like, Oh, he's in bed. I mean, I don't, I don't, <laughs> I have no idea to this day. So then that's what happened. So I started working. I, what happened is that those people running the event, they're like, what's your deal? Like, you know, we know you're lying. Yeah. We were clear your line. We still took your money. You're kind of interesting. What's your story? 
actually ends up working with that team and traveling the country doing the seminars. Wow. That's what got me into where I'm at today. That's what threw me into entrepreneurship because they said, oh, by the way, you're a freelancer. And I'm like, what's a freelancer? Ah, so you were a contractor for the company. Yeah, it was my first time moving away from this W-2 and then I got yeah. to 1099. And then everyone around me had their own businesses now because mm. everyone in that business was a consultant or they're a real estate investor. So it was like natural to be like, oh yeah, you can get an LLC. Oh, now you're on your own business. So yeah. by the time I was 27 was my first LLC. And that's when my mom called me and freaked out. She was like, I heard you're going to be an entrepreneur. It's really a bad idea. So, <laughs> And here we are. And here we are. Here Amazing. we are. So, yeah. so that's how I got started. Yeah, that's fantastic. Um, talk about sales. What's our, what are your yeah. philosophies around sales? Uh, so, you know, we have lots of entrepreneurs who yeah. are listening and uh, they are in business. They may be in a services based business or a, a product based business. Um, I do uh, have a lot of consultants uh, who listen. Uh, yeah. I'm curious about how sales looks. What would you recommend today if, if, a, if a consultant was struggling to find their next client? Yeah, great, great question. So, I, you know, I have a speech I kind of do called Sell Like a Boss because yeah. I have a book out called Sexy Boss and it kind of lines in with that. And, you know, coming from years of, I've had to do cold calling, I've had to solicitation, I've had to walk into a room of people I don't know and move people in from, you know, resistance mm -hmm. to freely giving me the credit card for three grand and super happy that they're doing it. You know, how do you, what is that process? And so one of the things that I did, and I'm sharing this with you so you get the context. Um, when I was traveling the country at that time, there was this considered, there's like three or four, uh, um, like what I call teams out. Okay. Yeah. Now the team, a, the good team, I call it the good team. They would go to New York and LA and they're seeing like 150 people, 200, 300 people, you know, they're closing big numbers. They're making bank, they're over at Ruth Chris, they're in the crown room. Like they're drinking some tequila. I was in the bad team. <laughs> so I was going to Peoria, Illinois. <laughs> or St. John's Newfoundland. Or, yeah. Or like St. John's Newfoundland. Like, yeah, we were going to these just, you know bad places yeah so we weren't seeing as many people but we're still the same time we're still getting on a plane on sunday we're still slunking our stuff around monday tuesday wednesday we're making a quarter of that money to our teammates so i was getting i'm competitive so i'm like dude how do we get these what what is the company looking for yeah to get these numbers up and so they said well you need to be at 12 to 20 percent of closing ratio oh okay and i'm like well how do we do that so i started to study the the masters back then which was ron legrand robert allen ted thomas Marshall oh, yeah. Cooper, and i would walk i would literally go to these seminars and just watch them and go okay like they say this and then they say that and the whole room is shifting and like well why is that and so i would bring back these nuggets to our speaker and go let's try this and let's try this and let's try this and all of a sudden our numbers started creeping up and creeping up and creeping up and now we're going to denver and now we're going to new york and now we're going to la and we're eating with chris we're all happy but the <laughs> the thing that was so interesting was like i got really fascinated mm. because we looked at first of all all the teams were selling the same dang thing mm. all of the speakers pretty much were given the same powerpoint presentation right? So yeah. what's the difference is? The difference was, was the nuances, how you create the room, the environment, mm. how you, how you introduced yourself when they, when they came to the door immediately. Hello, how are you connecting, connecting, yeah. really looking at them and connecting and what do you do for me? Why are you here today? Like we were engaging with them from the moment they even showed up in the space. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And making them feel no like and trust, no like and trust. Yes, there was already a brand. Yes, we had testimonials. Yes, we had these structures of that, yeah. you know, results oriented, testimonials, um, you know, we're better business bureaus, security. Yeah. But really, what do people want? This is where I learned. I learned everything we sell, everything we sell. And I mean everything from down to iPhones, iPad, whatever. There's only two things people buy, hope and confidence. Mm right? Yep. It's hope and confidence. So if you think about it, they're sitting in a room, we say whatever we say, they give us three grand and then they walk out with a piece of paper mm. 
and they walk out with the potential the potential of making money. It's the exact same sales process that every university on the planet sells to kids. So true, isn't it? Right? Yeah. If you go to our university, the potential of you coming out with a job potentially maybe of yeah. $75,000 a year is higher than if you go to that university. I mean, right. that's right. And end of the day, you have a piece of paper. Yeah. So if I was talking to consultants, what I do too as well, it's like, I always go down to this really core conversation of like, what actually are you selling? Mm. And if they're always like, oh, I had this service and I'm like, no, what are you selling? And I go and go and go until they get I'm like, you're selling hope and confidence. And if you don't know that, if you keep trying to sell the widget, yes, you're never going to get anywhere. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. So th yeah. When I got that shift for myself. Yep. I knew that no matter what I said, yes, it's three days. Yes, it's 3,000. Yes, it's blah, 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 feature benefit, feature benefit. It doesn't really matter. Right. You know what I mean? Hold yeah. on a second. How? Got your coffee? I got my coffee. We're good to go. <laughs> Life is happy. <laughs> so, so obviously to be able to sell hope and confidence, right. uh, you, you need to have a really high belief level in your own ability to execute and, and deliver that. Hey. Yeah. 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 I mean, any, any insight into. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, like I have a lot of, most of my clients right now are what I call information marketers or speakers. Yeah coaches where they're selling some kind of like concept. You yeah. have a dating coach. I have a person who sells um, into the dignity side. I have some, sell, someone who's selling into investments and real estate investment and everyone, they could, they could, if they were in front of me right now, they would go into like, this is the thing I'm selling. I'm like, no, what are you really selling? You're right. always selling hope and confidence. Even if your client is one of them is their clients are like big companies, Netflix, Warner Brothers, like big, big companies. What are they, what are you really selling to them? You're mm. selling that if you purchase your large package, they have the hope that your stuff will help their employees and they are going to have the confidence in you that you're going to be able to deliver that. Gotcha. At the yeah. end of the day, there's no guarantee, right? Mm. Yeah. So yeah. you have to be able to be willing to let all that go when you're selling any kind of abstract kind of thing, which is what coaching is. Coaching is an abstract. Yes. My first coach I got when, um, when I was 27, I called my dad in tears about something I had in life, whatever that was. And he said, I can't handle it. Get a coach. So I've had a coach now for almost 20 years in my life always. And the reason I love coaches is because they're always straight with you. They tell you how it is. They're never going to be wishy-washy with you. And they don't care if you like them. <laughs> no, right, and, yeah. they and they still send you a bill. You know, <laughs> <laughs> like, I hate you. No problem. I'll still send you the bill. So, <laughs> right? They're not like, I'm not your friend. And I'm like, but I want you to be. So, yes. Isn't that hard? <laughs> but if you think about it, that's what we're all selling. You know, yeah. even with the car, if like the tangible, why pick this Mercedes? Or I heard that one time talked about, there was a, I think Ryan Dice talked about the way that they sell Tesla mm -hmm. is they get you in the car and they do this thing called a fast track. You've heard of this thing? No, I, I don't. So how they, how they sell you is they don't sell you. They say, okay, get in the car and they take you to this like, you know, road that's closed and they go, okay, step on it. And then yeah. like the person kind of like, and the, the salesman was like, no, 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 really? no, 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 <laughs> step on it. And they're like, are you sure? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ste and it's like, <laughs> right. And then the salesman says nothing. It says, you want it? Like that, <laughs> right. And every guy on the planet goes, yes. Right. Yeah. So yeah. there's no selling there, but it's, it's confidence and hope. Mm, absolutely. And yeah. Because they feel if they get this car, like their life's going to be a dream, right? So yeah. that's what you're selling always is hope and confidence. That's what I would, that's my biggest I guess, thing I would share with people is that at the yeah. end of the day, that's what you're selling. Yeah. So are you, do you work with your clients to help them generate leads? And then what do you do with the lead on step one? What do you do with the lead on step two, build out a funnel and that type of stuff? Uh, is that the layer, the level of work you're doing with your clients? Yes and no. So I work on three things with my clients, message market media, right? So the first thing is that message, which is all the sales side and 
you know, what's the message and then who's the market is the message to market matching. Mm -hmm. And then where, and then where are they? Is it on Facebook ads? Maybe it's not. Maybe right. it's on a thing called a phone, phone, a little phone thing called a phone call. I don't, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Don't go crazy on me, but it could be, yeah. it could be a LinkedIn. It could not be, it could be a trade shows. It could not be. So, but before we ever get to where they are, you've yeah. got to make sure the mess of the market. So I work on those first two and sometimes we're on those for a long time because they're not matching. Right. So I can work on those for a while until we get to the media buying. You can't really get to media buying, no. which is what all that is. The funnel making, the, the Facebook ads, the email marketing, you know, podcast create. All those things are media. Yes. All those are media. All those are tools. Email marketing, podcasting, um, just on Facebook ads, uh, YouTube. Ads. That's, that's a tool. But yes. if you don't have the message to market right, step one and two, it doesn't matter how much money you throw at it. Yeah. It just doesn't matter. So I work a lot on the first two. Yeah. And then when they're ready, I allow them to go to media buying. Yeah, I, lo I love it because uh, you'll be throwing money into the wind uh, if you jump to the media before the message and the market is all And let me share something with you that I think that, that your audience would appreciate just to get the understanding. So when I was traveling the country doing these seminars around the country, just imagine for a second, this is, be by the way, everyone listening, this is before Facebook. <laughs> It's, it was real. There was life before Facebook. It's yeah. fascinating to me. But um, we had to get people in the room. We had to get butts in seats. Yeah. We had to get we had to get them from thing called a newspaper ad. Yeah. A infomercial and radio. Those were our three medias that the company would use. And here's what the company would say to us: If you can get us to zero, meaning if you can get us to, we've made we've made our money back from the media. We've not made $1 in profit. We are happy with you. Mm. If, so think about that. The, their front end, they could drop $150,000 on media spend. Yep. We would go into Chicago. If we can make them $150,000 and plus a dollar, we Maybe. still had a job. Yeah. Now, if, <clears throat> if you tell that to a small business owner and say, okay, you spend a thousand dollars on media. If you could just make that thousand dollars back, you're that's a good business model. Yeah. Most most businesses would freak out. Yeah. Right. But but where's the money made? Hmm. On the back end. On the back end, yeah. But if their funnel or their strategy or their sales system is not set up, then they're right. They're not. They're going to be out of business. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I, I tell people that all the time, especially small business owners, like dentists, chiropractors, and like that, they have a hard time with that. Mm. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Because in their brain, they're like, what do you mean if it takes me $1,000 to get a customer and I get the $1,000 back, that's, prof that's, that's a good business. I'm like, yeah. if you look at most businesses, that's how they are. Right. Yeah. So, so how uh, in your business, uh, obviously you got your media, or you, so your message uh, aligned and, um, how are you closing deals yourself at this stage in the game? Well, first of all, again, I get referrals, but I use my podcast a lot. I'm yeah. on the, I'm Ash and Kate radio. I do podcasting. Uh, I do a lot of content. I put a lot of content out there. So it's what I call moving the free line. So when you have moving the free line, you're giving, 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 yeah. and you're attracting people into that, that conversation with you. And oh. then you're moving people into, in, into your services basically. Yeah. yeah. That's one of the things I think that people have a hard time with is one, moving the free line, which is giving, 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 giving. You can literally give your entire secrets away. Yes. All of them. And people will still pay you. Yeah. You know, <clears throat> and that's one thing I'm constantly working with my clients. So like, well, I don't want to, I have someone right now I'm working with them on, on their book. Like, well, I don't want to put that in there because I actually charge a large amount of money for my clients to have that. I'm like, exactly. You put it in there. They go, oh my God, I want this. And they call you and they give you large amounts of money to, to do it. Yeah. 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 Cause so, uh, most, I mean the, the hurt of the, the hurt is not in the document. The hurt is in the, uh, the dialogue in the, the working one-on-one -on -one type stuff. Right. Yeah, exactly. That's why I think that, I think the last time I heard the fee to even get Tony Robbins cell phone, just to like have it. Yeah. It's like $75,000 for the year. Maybe it's a hundred <laughs> just to like, look at that. I got his number. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? That's all. What's up? It's all, that's all you're allowed to get. Like, I don't even know if you're allowed to text them. Like, I don't right. even know if you're allowed to call them maybe like once a year. Yeah. But the fact is that you have this, 
you know, access. Yeah. It's the access to the original person of the content. Yeah. And people in my experience with small business owners, they have a hard time, A, selling their services and believing themselves. B, they have a hard time putting themselves in the spotlight. Mm. Right. So that's the biggest challenge. I remember, I mean, I can't tell you how many times I actually ended up leaving my dentist, poor guy, but I would sit in my dentist chair every six months and go, will you please sell me something? <laughs> Come on. And he would like, I don't know what you mean to sell you. I'm like, oh, you're seriously only making $120 in this cleaning. Yeah. I know it costs you more. I'm looking at your office. You get like this super like plush office. Can you just sell me something so I feel better about myself? And he's like, <laughs> I don't want I don't want to sell you and upset you. You know? Yeah. That's a very typical small business owner. I'm like, Isn't it? yeah. Well that's uh it's interesting because uh back when I began my journey down this path five years ago after our company was acquired, uh I was the chair of the technology association here mm -hmm. where I live and I asked uh, a group of small business owners as a part of that role what were some of the first words that come to mind when do you think about sales? And it was all negative. It was sleazy, slimy, pushy, manipulative. And it was about a week later, then I read Dan Pink's book, To Sell is Human, and his research uh, sort of proved the same thing. So we don't, we're not, most of us don't have fertile ground foundations to work with, uh, you know, and so uh, I think entrepreneurs need to go to work on themselves as much as they need to go to work on, say, their offer and so on. I think there needs to be an alignment there, maybe all at the same time. So it's a confidence thing and, and a belief thing around sales that uh, certainly seems to hold a lot of people back. What's your experience with that? Oh, complete alignment. Yeah, yeah, complete alignment. And it's it's always easier to sell someone else. Like I can sit here and all day and go, okay, this guy's amazing. Like, let me tell you how freaking amazing this dude is. Like, it's so much easier to sell something else or someone else or a product. Like I can tell you this pink cup, like it's amazing. It's like the best. Yeah. But then all of a sudden going, let me tell you how amazing I am. That's where it gets super weird for, for solo entrepreneurs. It, it just... It just does. Let me tell you how great I am. Tell you how amazing I am. And tell you my testimonials. It's a it's a weird experience because we're taught at such a super young age, if you're in the Western culture, to not do that. Mm. Right? We're just told we're taught not to do that. And yet, and yet, the ones that are successful are the ones that are completely okay with saying how amazing they are and how studly they are and um, what a great job they do. Right. Yeah, exactly. Right. Where do you, where do you find uh, the. Then you have a woman aspect, then you have the gender conversation, yes. and then it's yeah. a whole other level of that. Yeah, exactly. That's an interesting point. Uh, uh, one of the things that I, in analysis of my consulting clients and my coaching clients, 95% uh, of them are females. And I don't know, I, I've tried to do some analysis to why that is. And uh, uh, I guess I, I, I'm starting to conclude that the, my approach to sales is more in alignment with the female side of things is more of a nurturing feel to it versus that uh, pushy type of feel, right? Um, right. Yeah. Um, so uh, I'm curious about the, the side of like, I find personally uh, mm -hmm. that the genuine, authentic stories, um, uh, you know, as much sharing the downsides of your life as much as the upsides, which we kind of did. I mean, you've, you expressed a lot of stories around struggling in the earliest days, right? In in terms of working with your clients, do you do you do you try to get them to weave into their sales process? Uh, you know, the sharing of all aspects of their of their story and personality. Oh yeah, because people at the end of the day, it's human to human interaction. We're all selling to H to H, right? And you know this, but at the end of the day, we don't we we all want to be and feel perfect. We we don't want to buy perfect, right? Unless we're buying the Mercedes, right? So if we're buying a coach, let's say, or a consultant. We want them to know they're going to give us the results, but we also want to know that they can understand our struggles and, con and our concerns. Yes. So I always go back to dating coach because I kind of came from that world and I have a client who's a dating coach right now. And I'm like, you need to start sharing more about not only your clients, like before and afters, but you need to share your stuff. Yeah. And she's not there yet and we're working through it. But in her view, it's like, well, she doesn't want to share her own personal stuff going on about her own relationships. And I'm like, mm. girlfriend, you've got to start showing, here's my failures. Here's yeah. what I've gone through. And then you can also project onto a client. Of course, like I have a client, she started here and now she's there kind of like a weight loss, but even the best 
trainers, I was going to weight loss because it's easy. Even the best trainers who are great, great trainers. We always want to know a trainer that maybe was a little fat and then they got thick. Like we want yeah. that trainer versus like, oh, you've always been an athlete. Like you're always Mr. Perfect and you've always had six pack abs. Like why would I want to hire you? You don't understand me. I want to have somebody who's like, they've struggled a little, they've able to get it off. You know what I mean? I want to have that kind of trainer if that's something I'm dealing with. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right. You know, and, but that's just how we are as human beings. At the same time, if you go to pro athletes, like an NFL player and whatnot, you look at coaches who sometimes are just completely out of shape. They're not doing anything on the side. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) You know, they've had six pack of beer, but I mean, but they're the ones training, you know, they're the ones that has the eye for the athlete. So it's not always that way, but if you're going to be that kind of trainer where maybe you're not in the field with them, literally like a football coach, right? right? right. You need to understand though. Maybe you were in football one time. You understand what it takes and feels to get hit. Yes. You understand it. You get it. Yes. You know what it's like to have to get off the ground and when you're sweating and disgusting, whatever, like you can empathize. And so as a coach and consultant, you have to be willing to show the failure b- being able to you overcoming the failing, the struggles by the being empathy, empathetic. Right. Yeah. Like, love can it. you understand me? Yes. You know, and that's why I wrote the book, sexy boss. I didn't write that book for me. Right. That book is about massive struggle. Mm. I was completely broke. I was living on an Island. I had no money. I was just went through bankruptcy. I was by myself. I had nothing. I had no family and I had to figure out how to start over from Mm. scratch without help. And I wrote this book called Sexy Boss about everything that I did mentally to overcome that. Love it. Love it. So the the book was not really for anyone. It was for me to share and to kind of, how do I say this? Like what I call lift up the skirt and go, okay, I'm not perfect. I've actually failed miserably. Yes. And I'm not proud of it, but I'm going to share it. Yeah, love it. And it allows it take it allows you to be free in the marketplace. You don't have to be putting off this per- perfect image all the time because you wrote you wrote a book where you disclosed it all. Right. So now you can just be yourself. I actually am one of those people that I don't like it when people tell me how great they are all the time and every, like, they they throw out all the rewards. Yeah. And I'm always like, Okay, that's great and all, but like give me some juice. Like, yeah. where'd you like fall on your ass? You know what I mean? <laughs> Come on, are you always Mr. Perfect over here? That's annoying. You know, yeah. I I want to have someone who overcame something. Those are the stories that we as human beings love and adore. Yeah. So when I wrote the book Sexy Boss, I mean, my intention, no kidding, I tell the story all the time, is that my story, my intention was if one person bought it mm. and one person liked it. Yeah. It was a success. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, uh, I can relate big time to that. As a matter of fact, when I authored my book, uh, in my, uh, first, what's it called? The first part or the introduction or whatever it is. Yeah. Uh, I, I actually said that I've, uh, that I've written, I've wrote this book for my two children, uh, because I want them. I, and my story is very similar. It's about, uh, it's about the downside of, uh, my life and how I overcame that, uh, and, and so on. So, and I, I wanted to write it in language that my children at that time, who uh, that's four years ago, so they were 14 and 10, I wanted to do it in the way that they could actually understand it. So, uh, so I think I achieved that, right? Uh, I'm curious for you. Yeah. Uh, it's interesting you brought up the book because that's exactly where I wanted to go. I was curious, yeah. what has that done for your brand? And, and um, uh, have you been able to leverage it to other things? Yeah. So I wrote the book, Sexy Boss. I have an Audible as well. And then um, I Kindle, of course. I wrote the book with the Ford of, from Joe Sugarman, who's the top direct response copywriter. It's brilliant. And I wrote the book and, and actually ended up been my business for the last four years. It kind of threw me into being a coach for female entrepreneurs. It's not what I was intending. Right. I just want to empower women. And obviously I'm a huge fan of women because, well, I am one, so that's good. But I mean, I, I, the intention of the book was just to get my story out because I was sitting there one day in 2006. And this is right after when I found out that my business partner stole everything empty the bank accounts and I was being thrown into bankruptcy and foreclosure all at the same time. Holy and smokes. Yeah, it was a rough year. And I was, cause I just, we just built a business from zero to a million dollars. I went from like rolling in the dough kind of thing to in like one day. So I was still 
dealing with the reality. Like the brain was still kind of like processing, is this really happening? And a friend of mine, Alex Mendozian, actually had a conversation with me that day. <clears throat> and he said, one day, Heather, you're going to share your story about this or something. <laughs> and I'm sure my response was something on the lines of like, F, 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 U, F, U, you never, <laughs> some, you know, along that. And <clears throat> never, ever will I ever share this because I was so embarrassed. I was very embarrassed about this. And you know, because up until that point in my life, it was the thing I did in life was successful. So it was this huge, like, personal embarrassment, you know? Yeah. And he kind of went, okay, okay, well, not today. Maybe <laughs> another day, you know? <laughs> and I actually just interviewed him last week on my show, and I reminded him of that story. He's like, I totally forgot about that. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, it was because of you. But so I wrote the book in 2013 from that view of, like, I'm just going to share the story. And if one woman can say, I get that, or a man, I've actually had a lot of men read my book and say, I really get your story. Amazing. That's awesome. You know, so that was the intention. And the yeah. book from now, and I'm actually reading my, I'm actually writing my next book. How are you? I was going to ask you that. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Well. I, I have five books out, but like I have what I call staple books. You know, yes. like the main. Yeah. So my next one, I'm super excited at the belt and it's moving me to a kind of a, a bigger direction and I'm talking to your publisher. So it's going to be a different direction for me. I'm, I'm super excited. Yeah, about it. Fabulous. I have uh, found the book to be a great, uh, you know, the uh, whole idea of reciprocity as I've expanded oh, yeah. my consulting business. When I go, I don't know book. if the mail goes to St. John's, but I will send you a book. Yeah. Oh yes. Of course it goes to St. John's and I'll send you a copy of my book as well. Uh, does, yeah. it go, does it really go there? Does the <laughs> mail go it comes message I, in a bottle. You had to flip it out in the ocean. It comes up. <laughs> Does it, will it get there? Like in a, like in a couple of weeks? I'll, I'll receive it in a couple of months. I would a imagine. A couple of months. Like I got yeah. your book. Yeah. 2019. I got it. <laughs> um, I'm kidding. I'll uh, send you a book, but, um, no, thank you for that. But yeah, I appreciate it. This is outstanding. Um, any closing thoughts? Uh, number one, I'd love for you to tell people how to find you and follow you and learn more from yeah. you. Uh, but if there's any additional kind of closing thoughts, uh, you know, feel free to share them. Sure. Thank you for that. I really honored that. So if this is something that you're interested in having a conversation with me about, I'd love to just, you know, reach out to me. I'm very personal. I want to have a conversation with you. Yep. How you do that is go to callwithheather.com, schedule like a 45 minute interest in working with Heather, just conversation. Yeah. But if you want to get uh, three free chapters of my audiobook, Sexy Boss, where it's me speaking, actually my book, uh, you can go to askheatherand.com askheatherand.com. Now what that's going to do is going to open up my chat bot on messenger. And so I'm going to like start talking to you. This little chat bot thing's going to start talking to you. It's not me people. It's called a <laughs> chat bot, but um, <laughs> it interacts with you and then you give them your email and, and then we send you the three free chapters of your audiobook. Yeah. yeah. Outstanding. Well, there you go. I was, uh, as I, and, and I, I don't, maybe that's another show. I'd love to understand yeah. some more. Your yeah. I did. I speak around, I speak on chatbots. I yeah. I saw that on your here. website. Yeah. About chatbots and the, because it's really, and, I, and we're talking about it, but I just, it's, it's a, it's moving into sales, right? It's a conversation, yeah. right? Yeah. It's, all it is. it's a sales yeah. conversation with obviously an AI, yeah. you know, but um, it's really getting to that piece of that conversation. We're all kind of, as you know, right. We swung, we swung, we were into sales and we were into like connection. And then like the 2006, seven, eight happened, Facebook happened nine. And we swung into like never talking to each other again on the planet to we're like swinging Coming back, back to yeah. connecting and yeah. actually interacting and yeah, I love it. I love it. The it's pendulum great. swinging back. Yeah, yeah. It's a great multiplier opportunity as well where, you know, you can, uh, you know, you, like you said, the artificial intelligence combined with, oh, I guess, yeah. ease of access and so on. I think it's a great uh, tool. So uh, maybe that's a future episode. But uh, Heather, I'm really Thanks. grateful you took the time. And Absolutely. You look forward to this going live and hopefully people take you up on your offer to get your three uh, audible book uh, chapters uh, from your book. And uh, I guess we'll, uh, we'll connect again soon. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for listening to the It's Time to Sell podcast at chrisspurvey.com.